Before we begin, please have a piece of paper and a pen or pencil available. Benacht, that's the Gaelic word for blessing and is probably one of the few words in Gaelic that I know. We're going to give some thought to change and the gift of resilience today. As a child, the only meaning I knew for change were the coins that my father jingled in his trouser pockets. He did this when he was either nervous or perplexed, and that was change. Everything in my life was quite predictable. We lived in a three-story duplex in a working class neighborhood, along with my maternal grandfather, my maternal aunt, a maternal uncle, and my parents, and me, and another maternal aunt who came for the noontime meal every day. We called that meal dinner. Life stayed the same. My best friend, Patty, lived a couple of blocks away. It was an easy bike ride. For the first 16 years of my life, we lived in the same house, attended the same school, the same church, ate the same foods, and bought a new Plymouth without a radio or air conditioning every three years, whether we needed it or not. Trauma and turbulence filled the next several decades. But I'm not here to tell you of that saga today. Suffice to say, there was earth shattering change and apparently the many gifts of resilience. I am here today. How about you? Were your growing up years stayed and predictable? What change or lack of change influenced who you are today? Take a couple minutes to jot down some thoughts about were your growing up years stayed and predictable or what change or lack of change influenced who you are today? <clears throat> you can go back and continue writing after we've finished. The years preceding my birth were the years of change. In 1863, a baby girl was born to Mary Driscoll and her husband, James Murphy, in the tiny town of Drimalig, County Cork, Ireland. Her name was Julia. Julia's father, James, died shortly thereafter. Her mother, Mary, remarried and had several more children. J Julia knew she needed to leave this splendid family. Change was already embedded in Julia's psyche. Fast forward to the year 1879. Julia, now 16, boarded a cattle boat alone in the Irish port of Cobb. Julia crossed the Atlantic Ocean. She could not read nor write in English. Ultimately, Julia became an American citizen, married an industrious man named Edward Kavanaugh and had six children. She survived two world wars, the depression and the death of her youngest child in the pandemic of 1918. Her first two children, the oldest children in the family were girls. They graduated from college. 
that represents a lot of change and a lot of resist, re, a lot of resilience in one generation. As you have probably guessed, Julia was my paternal grandmother. My family went from having this daring matriarch to being one of the most risk-averse clans I know. None of my aunts and uncles, including my parents, lived outside of Stratford County where they were born. On both the maternal and paternal sides of my family, no one left their home of origin before they turned 35. What factor is it that encourages a young woman to leave her family for a foreign country and the very next generation to be so apparently timid? Lately, I heard from a coaching colleague, besides being an outstanding coach, he's also a professor emeritus at the Coaches Training Institute. After 30 years, Ken has decided to give up this fulfilling career. He hasn't decided what to do next. He is welcoming change. He asks the question, what do you long to change in your life? And who or what is calling you? Take a few minutes to answer those questions yourself. What do you long to change in your life? And what or who is calling you? Again, if you haven't finished, go back later and answer those questions. What do you long to change in your life? And who or what is calling you? I polled a number of people with these questions. Many talked of the change they anticipate as they retire. Others mourned childhood trauma and begged for life without these memories. One spoke enthusiastically of an upcoming cross country move so that she can live closer to a young grandchild that she has yet to meet. Another looks forward to a brand new role as a guardian ad litem. She writes that she welcomes this change she is grateful for the gifts she has amassed during her 77 years that have prepared her for this role. The most poignant story of change in resulting resilience comes from a friend whose relatively young husband experienced a massive cerebral hemorrhage three weeks ago. He is recovering in a Boston hospital. He lost his ability to speak, write, walk, talk, laugh. She calls this traumatic event unbidden change. She's grateful for the re resilience that has occurred already. She is able to drive from the Maine, New Hampshire seacoast to Boston every day to visit him. And she has rediscovered a former passion for photography as she walks around Boston neighborhoods. Have you experienced unbidden change? 
Are you more resilient now? As I write these words, I can hear in the background that our US Senate is preparing to vote on the infrastructure bill. Speaking of change, let us welcome these proposed changes to our life and let us be grateful for the resulting resilience that we will build. Let it be so.